it felt great to be back in Hansel's shoes, especially when we did the uh, the Valentino fashion show in Paris. Because up until that point, you're kind of, well, I wonder what the reaction is going to be. But when we kind of came out for, uh, walked on the runway for that and uh, got such a good, good reaction, that was, I think that gave us some, uh, that gave us a good feeling. I've been lucky to play some good characters over the years, but uh, you know, playing a character, Hansel, that's just known by one name, like Madonna, Sting, um, that that sort of uh, kind of reflects on, uh, yeah, just what a kind of uh, funny, memorable character this is. Where the movie really begins is sort of, I've sort of been exiled to, I've given up modeling and I've kind of, I'm living in the desert uh, with a group of friends and, uh, you know, doing sort of Hansel type activities. And then I'm sort of brought back into this world of high fashion and to see if, uh, you know, if there's still that passion, that eye of the tiger for it, uh, which there is. Well, we have Will Ferrell returning as Mugatu, and um, that's exciting because he's sort of a Hannibal Lecter, kind of a, a villain that you end up loving um, to watch, at least I do. The character that Kristen Wiig plays is sort of the it fashion designer, um, and so everything sort of you know, whatever she says sort of goes in the fashion world. And she's a very uh, intimidating person. And her, her look in the movie is, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to see Kristen Wiig in there. It's a very, it's like something out of, more like Brazil from Terry Gilliam. You have to have good wardrobe when you're playing Hansel. Uh, that's very important. And Ben pointed out just the other day that what that he saw Kanye wearing uh, this jacket at a, I think maybe a Knicks game or something. So, um, you know, if, if it's good enough for Kanye, it's good enough for Hansel. I've always been surprised over the years that, uh, especially kind of in in Europe, but even in you know Mexico and South America, that there just seems to be a real um, cult following or people come up to me and uh, they're always asking me to do Blue Steel and I don't do Blue Steel. That's Ben's character. Uh, but um, I, I don't know. I think it's something a lot of times, you know, comedies uh, don't necessarily translate to other cultures and um, other countries. And the reason that this has, I think, is that there's, uh, well, they're a little bit like cartoon characters, kind of. So it's a little bit almost, um, you know, the, the stuff that, that uh, you know, the kind of the situations and the things that... Uh, kind of Zoolander and Hansel kind of say and do. Uh, there's such a kind of ridiculousness to it that uh, I think people sort of appreciate. With Ben, um, you know, at the helm, it's not like you ever have to worry about Ben just decide, I'm just going to phone it in. It's like he's going to, you know, absolutely just kill himself to make it as good as it can be. So... Uh, yeah, so I guess that's why I'm able to just relax because I know there's no pressure on me because he's always thinking, how do we make it better? <laughs> Die Hard originated from the failed script of Commando 2. For this and more movie facts, click on more videos. But if you want something else, uh, click on the playlist. <laughs>